Okay. Hey there, everybody. This is Carrie Hamblin, the CEO and president of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, coming to you again in another Zoom chat with our members of the Las Cruces Green Chamber. You know, we're doing this as a way of amplifying your social media presence uh, in the community. So it's not just on your Facebook page, but it's also on ours. And people share it all over the place, which is the whole purpose of the interwebs. And today, I have the one and only Michelle Mounier, who is the founder and executive director of Action Programs for Animals. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. Thank you for having us. Having you. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we action programs for animals is near and dear to us because our two kittens are rescues because of you. Um, you came over and saw, you know, before the pandemic and got some furniture and saw how big Sherlock is getting. We still think he's part Maine Coon. So he's, he's, he's a big furry boy. Um, but we're very grateful for what you do um, because of our fur babies. And, um, you know, many nonprofits right now have been impacted by COVID. So what have, what have you been, how have you been impacted uh, at the Adoption Center by this? It, it kind of happened in phases. You know, when, when the first closing happened, we had to close everything because we had just opened a thrift store two weeks after October. So we had to close the Adoption Center. We had to close the thrift store for a couple of months. And then when things started getting back to where we could um, at the adoption center, we closed, but we were still doing by appointment. So I, I do want to thank the community because people were still coming in to adopt, um, to foster while they were home, even if it was just for a short time. We did have a lot of support with adoptions. Those didn't drop too much. Um, so our, our adoption center was still busy, even though we were technically closed to the public and we had to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And we also and did like that for about, oh, I can't remember now, March probably till about June and then we started opening up with the 25% when they allowed 25% capacity in the building when we opened up, you know, our regular yeah. hours. And yet you still had people who are going there who were volunteers that were there when the building was closed, taking care of the animals, making sure that they were mm -hmm. taken, you know, fed and bathed and especially like, you know, kitten season always hits like what, February? Yeah, it hits early here. You know, starting in March, we start seeing kittens and then April, May, June, July, August. <laughs> Even until now, we're we're start we're still going to the shelter to pull cats and kittens. Right, and one of the things, can you tell me? Um, I love that you do so much work with pit bulls, mm -hmm. because yeah. those those are a breed that get a bad rap, and many times it's not their fault; it's their owner's fault and their training and the abuse. And so, I love that you rehab pit bulls. We're we're very we try not to be breed specific, but we do focus on pit bulls because they are so misunderstood and so abused. So we do have a soft spot for them, but we mostly take dogs out of the shelter that other rescues don't want. Kind of the big unruly, the pit bulls, the chihuahuas, the you know the the ones that are not as popular, right. or they they're so popular that they're just too numerous. That's the problem too. And what we found over the years, we've rescued thousands of dogs now, uh, many of them pit bulls, is that all dogs are different. So we try to explain to people because people come in and ask about breed all the time. Very little has to do with breed because so many dogs are so mixed. You're not going to get many, you know, pure purebred dogs. Um, so every dog has its own characteristics, have their own characteristics that are not breed specific. And we try to, to educate people that it's not about breed. It's about getting to know the dog and if it's a good match for you. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And <laughs> And you've got some really great programs. I love the um, the program that you have with folks who are incarcerated, who are training uh, the dogs right now. And such mm -hmm. a great, great idea. You know, hats off to you and mm -hmm. the volunteers who are doing such great mm -hmm. work. And, you know, one of the things that um, you, you just, I mean, it's been kind of like long overdue and you've been working really hard to do it is that uh, you've got a new building. You've got a built, somebody donated a building to you <laughs> that you're now going to be able to move into, right? <laughs> right. Uh, what happened is we had a bequest from a former adopter who passed away. And she left us a pretty, pretty um, generous bequest where we were able to purchase the old Solano Animal Clinic. So up until this time, we've been renting in a little old building on Picacho that we can't really do much with or expand too much with because it's just it's what it is. Right. Um, so we're very excited to go into a bigger space where we have a bigger building. It's about it's more than twice the size of the building we're now. And then we have a whole, you know, other lot next to it that we can grow into as time goes on. So Congrat congratulations. Yeah. Um, but with that, though, comes, you know, kennels and cattery, you know, cat patios and, 
and all sorts of stuff. So right now you're uh, trying to raise some money to help like really with some of the infrastructure of the building. So tell us about that. Yes, so the bequest did cover the cost of the building itself, but now we want to, we had to go in and redo the kennels because the kennels that were there were chain link and tiny and just not gonna work for us. So we've emptied that out and we're, we have a, a campaign on Facebook right now to sponsor a dog kennel and you get your sponsorship engraved on the top. We've gotten 10 of the 14 so far sponsored, so we're excited about that. And we're gonna have equivalents in the cat room. We're gonna have new condos for them that are more spacious. So we're gonna build outdoor catios that are enclosed and safe, but still give them that fresh air and, and more space so the cats will be happier. Most yeah. of our cats live communally. They don't live locked up in, in, in cages all the time like at a regular shelter. So we're excited to make them even more comfortable in that way. Yeah. Well, when we picked up Watson, she was, uh, we picked her up two weeks after we got Sherlock. Um, mm -hmm. And I think she just walked right up to my wife. And that was, yeah. I was like, okay, I think she's the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they pick up. Um, so that's fantastic. And you've got such mm -hmm. tremendous community support and you do such great work. Mm -hmm. Um, for those of you, if you'd like to help out Action Programs for Animals, you can see you can see the link to their Facebook page in the content below. Um, please do your part to help out. Um, and even if you can't afford supporting, like, you know, the building of a, a, a cat kennel or a catio, um, but also, like, when you go to the store and if you've got some, you know, you see some cat food that you'd like to get or dog food, that's always welcome as well. You know, it, it really does take a community effort. And, you know, it'd be nice to put you out of business so that we don't have a lot of strays. And that's kind of the goal no. of every nonprofit, but yeah. that's not going to happen anytime soon. No, especially with the cats and the felines here, it's still a big issue and there's still a lot of overpopulation. So. Right. So one unspayed cat can throw 7,000 kittens. Is that the, the number? When you see that chart, yeah, because you're talking about each cat can have yeah. like eight for litter and they can have three or four litters a year where yeah. it's warm so you know it's, it's specific to your area but here they can procreate a lot because it's so warm most of the year yeah yeah so and as much as i love our fur babies we also want to go ahead and control that population because then there are those that get neglected um, you, you feed outdoor cats that's fine but we're trying to educate people you should fix them and control your colony so you're not just feeding and creating more and more and more um unwanted, you know, cats. Yeah. Well, you know, Michelle, you and your volunteer crew just, you do a great job. Um, you know, I'm so grateful for what you do uh, for our pet population and really creating more awareness and building those collaborations, you know, with the prisons, mm -hmm. having uh, those who are incarcerated train animals. Um, it's just such a great job. So if, if you are uh, wanting to help support action programs for animals in any capacity whatsoever, follow them on Facebook. Michelle and the crew do a great job of highlighting their fur babies that get adopted, who gets, uh, you know, to stay at home overnight, gets to have a sleepover. Um, it's really, really a wonderful, you know, in this time of, of challenging, if you want to feel good, follow that page because you get to see how so many of our little animals get to find homes. And it's because of the work that you guys do at, at, at APA. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you for your help pretty updated to where people can see um, what's going on. People keep asking me, when are you going to move? Just kind of watch that page because when we need help, we ask for it. <laughs> so Yeah. Well, I have a truck, so we can we can use okay. my truck too. So, um, so thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, everybody, for your support of the Green Chamber and of our local businesses and our local nonprofits. And, and uh, you know, keep doing your part. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Uh, support our local businesses in whatever way you feel comfortable doing. Um, because they're the backbone of our community and we're grateful for them. So have a great day, everybody. And uh, as always, we're, we're grateful for you.